Hi everyone, welcome to the best of CAT series and we are looking at one more question from geometry today. Now, this question is a very common question. In fact, all IMS students would know that this question was there in their material for many, many years and CAT has asked literally a similar question. So, two circles each of radius 4 touch each other externally. Let us try and have the diagram first. Each of these two circles also touch externally by a third circle. So, these are the three circles we will have. We have the two circles which touch each other externally and third circle is also touching them such that the, all three circles have a common tangent and that is why the circle comes down. Understand that is very important. Normally, when such a diagram comes in, people think of this diagram, you know, three circles touching each other, something like this. But then their common tangent would be difficult. So, this is the diagram we are talking about. The common tangent can come over here. Now, let us see what else has been asked or given to us. They have told us the radius of the initial two circles were 4 centimeters and they have asked us to find the radius of the small circle. Obviously, let us take the radius of the small circle as r. So, what are we getting? We have got, now, I have taken the center of the two circles over here, the bigger circle and the smaller circle. Let us, if you want, just call them as O and P to understand. So, I know OP will be 4 plus r because the radius of the uh, larger circle is 4 and the radius of the smaller circle is r. So, OP will become 4 plus r. I am trying to make a triangle where I can get in terms of r and I can then use Pythagoras theorem. So, this radius is 4. Now, that we can see 4 over here. Now, if I drop a perpendicular from P, if I drop a perpendicular from P over here, do you agree that will also be 4? Think carefully, why will that be 4? If you want to call this as PM or whatever, that PM will be 4 because that is exactly same as this line. And if I join this, this whole thing would become a square of 4 by 4. Right? So, we have got that as 4. Now, this part will also become R, M, N if you want to call it. M, N will also be R and hence O, M which I want will be 4 minus R. O, P will be 4 plus R and we know M, P will be 4. I think after this, the sum is very, very straightforward. Let us go through that again. O m is 4 minus r because it is O n minus m n. Then we know P o, o p is 4 plus r and m p is 4. Use Pythagoras theorem. O p is your hypotenuse. So, we will get 4 plus r the whole square is equal to 4 minus r plus 4. 4 minus r the whole square plus 4 square. Now, if you were paying attention to the options over here, you would have easily realized the answer. What is the most common Pythagoras triplet? 3, 4, 5, right? If this is 4, there is very high chance that this is 3 and this is 5. And the option also helps us to get it. Answer is 1 directly, which is the fourth option. Why? Because see, 4 minus 1 would become 3 and 4 plus 1 would become 5. Well, if you did not think of that, just expand it and solve it out. You will get 16 plus 8r plus r square is equal to 16 minus 8r plus r square plus 16. So, r square, r square cuts out on both sides, 116 cuts out on both sides. So, we get 16r is equal to 16 and r is equal to 1, which is the fourth option. So, again a pretty standard question. You should be able to do such questions easily. Please try the replica question and give your answers in the comment box.